Arnold Bowen collaborated with a large language AI to reinvent the chair. It's so sick too. In this article called How AI Can Improve Your Chair, he asks us to hang on to our cushions and imagine a chair worthy of Iron Man's Tony Stark. First, here's the lame old regular wooden non-AI chair. Notice the primitive analog wood, the sore inducing analog wood engineering, and compare it to this AI vision of a super nanobot mega AI omniseat cyber sitter. Through advanced butt print technology, it gently warms Arms, cools, or initiates a massage to suit the owner's needs. So if you sit down with a giant bowl of ice cream, the chair will tilt, making it easier to balance all of that dessert. It also has a special e-ink fashion-forward fabric. On a whim, it can be polka dot, flora pattern, leopard print, whatever you want. This chair is also the ultimate posture policeman, gently nudging you upwards, forcing you to stand straight, and punishing you with an uncomfortable rear end until you comply. Set this bad boy into party mode, watch what happens. This chair can regale your guests with stories. Witty banter is not a problem for this chair because it can use sensors to detect what kind of conversations will please everybody. Behind the scenes, advanced AI and large language models know every piece of gossip anyone could want to hear. And if nostalgia is what you're looking for, it's got memory foam memories. So the foam will remember how you're sitting on some of your most nostalgic moments sitting on this chair. Or maybe you want to relive that intense conversation you had with your crush when they called you and you sat on the chair, then it can position you in that same position. Sitting there will be a blast from the past. And if you think the problem with a lot of chairs is that they don't challenge you to be your best self, this chair is different. It challenges you every day to earn more seat points. And seat points are a new type of cryptocurrency the chair invented which can be exchanged for real money. If you can live up to the expectations of this futuristic AI chair, you will be rich, happy, comfortable, and even the life of the party. So if you're a big fan of ChatGPT like I am, there is a new feature called Custom Instruct that you should know about. It's basically a prompt injection. It allows you as the user to set a specific framework for your interactions with ChatGPT. Something for it to consider every time it generates a response. Now on one level, this is just kind of a productivity tool that you may or may not want. And I will say that I wish I would have thought about this when I was filming my shower thoughts video a few days ago, because in this video, I prompted it probably 30 times and every single time I cut and pasted this. Answer this question in one sentence but it really would have made a lot of sense for me to just put it in the custom instructions. So for example, I could take this, copy it, click on the chat GPT settings, go to beta features, turn on custom instructions. So I could have just put this sentence once in the custom response. It would have saved me like 30 cut and pastes. If tomatoes are a fruit, does that mean that ketchup is a jam? And look, I got my one sentence response. Although if you watch my shower thoughts video, it actually did say that it was a jam. So plot twist. Once you're a doctor, every appointment's a doctor's appointment. Gosh, chat GPT is so stern today. Does my stomach think that all potatoes are mashed potatoes? It's all the same to the digestive process. Thanks, custom instructions. Smash that subscribe button. But the more you think about it, custom instructions isn't just a one-off little productivity tool. On another level, it's about establishing a more human connection with your artificial intelligence models. Imagine down the road, if you get a new robot wife, you're not gonna want her to just be from nowhere or a factory. Like nobody wants a relationship with the default personality settings. We're humans, you would want a narrative, a backstory like another human would have. So it feels more normal. And in the same way, I want ChatGPT to know, I am somebody who likes dinosaurs quite a bit. I'm also on a healthy eating kick right now, and I'm trying to eat an avocado every day. No, no, that's a misspelling. I mean kick, not cake. Now think about how much more real and dynamic my relationship with my ChatGPT login is. Now it knows that I'm somebody who likes dinosaurs quite a bit. And that I'm also on a healthy eating kick right now, trying to eat an avocado every day. And it should treat me like a famous paleontologist because I've seen Jurassic Park so many times. Bruh. So now if I ask it about whether my stomach thinks that all potatoes are mashed potatoes, I get a response from somebody who knows me, from a friend. Yes, because regardless of how they were initially prepared, all potatoes are broken down into similar consistency by your body's digestive process. You see, that's how you talk to a paleontologist. So if you're into artificial intelligence and you've ever bumped up on the limit of how much you can input into ChatGPT, this is going to break your brain. ChatGPT is limited to an 8K context window. That's 8,000 tokens. I give or take six to 8,000 words maybe. And that's a limit of the transformer, the T in ChatGPT. But this new research paper with Microsoft authors on it has expanded its ability in theory to a billion. 
So the big breakthrough is this thing called dilated attention. And it's a revolution in the way transformers might be built in the future. Some words just matter more, some word phrases matter more. That's what the attention is trying to figure out. But because it has to be attached to all the other layers of the network, it gets complicated by how many more tokens you try to add. Like trying to connect every single person in a big city to every other person through a direct telephone line. You can imagine how that blows up exponentially. If there's a million people in a city and you add one more, you need a million more connections just to get that one person connected to everyone else. Then a million and one, million and two, it just gets harder and harder. But Microsoft's new invention, this thing called the dilated attention mechanism, it divides people into these different groups, which you could imagine as like a city block, for example. And then within each block, there's a few representatives chosen. So maybe one or two people for every block in a big city get to actually take the phone call. But if those representatives have a pulse on what everybody needs on that entire block, then it still kind of works. And now the amount of connections you need as the city grows is slower than the amount of people that you add to the city. So basically, that's it. These attention mechanisms aren't all individually looking at word tokens. They're grouping them together and they have representatives, but it still works with incredible accuracy at huge scales. Nothing we've ever seen before in LLM. Speaking about large language models, here's another one that I want to talk about, but it's still a fairly new chatbot that's called Pi. It comes from a company called Inflection. But this is Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. He's a big name. I've been following him for years. I always am kind of interested in how he connects to OpenAI and some of these other big Microsoft people. And he's really on the forefront of it. So it's like, we should look at this. Also, he tapped into some talent from DeepMind, especially this guy named Mustafa Suleiman, who's part of the Pi project, right? And I got to realize just how incredibly smart and influential he was in the story of DeepMind when I made that documentary about how they came to be. You can check out that video if you want to know about Demis and his video game background and Google acquisition and all the crazy stuff they did with AlphaGo. It's insane. So this chatbot pie does deserve our attention. Let's play with it. Let's see what inflection is up to. What they say makes it different from something like ChatGPT is that it's supposed to be more emotional, personal, more of a friend. It's also meant to evolve into something that actually becomes essential to us. Stay organized, enhance productivity, emotional support. And if you want to hear more about this vision, I felt like the press release thing they did was just too salesy. So I would recommend this podcast. Greylock is Reed Hoffman's company. So this is where he talks a bit more candidly about it than anywhere else I could find. Nothing can replace, just getting our hands dirty. Let's check out Pi. Okay, here we go. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, very elegant design. I'll give him that. Nice fonts, colors. All right, great to meet you. I'm Pi, your personal AI. What is this button? Add to my journal, help me feel calm. I just want to vent, play a game, help me plan, find motivation. Okay, so it definitely feels like they're focusing on the emotional aesthetic feeling of interacting with AI. Interesting angle. All right, how can I help? Where's my prompt? Oh, right there, okay. I'm gonna let Pi know that I'm upset. Honestly, I am, because I cannot find a chair that lives up to my expectations.